Hello and welcome to your first lesson for the pelvis sacroiliac joint and lumbar spine masterclass. My name is John Gibbons and I will be your tutor throughout this course. Okay, so hopefully you've downloaded the same chapter. Okay, so this is chapter one taken from my pelvis book. So it might be an idea to maybe uh, have it uh, like on an iPad or on a computer where you can watch and listen at the same time and go through some of the stuff I'm going through. Or maybe you want to read the text first yeah, and then watch the video. It is your choice completely. What you find is in this lesson there's also a few more videos and I am physically teaching uh, anatomy of a pelvis on a human female pelvis that was donated to me. So go through this lesson first and then watch the one where I'm physically showing you all the bony landmarks. And I think that's pretty fascinating to watch. Okay, so let's get started. Now, if you're looking at uh, the pelvis as such, then this course is not just about the pelvis in itself. So the pelvis is almost like a three-dimensional bowl, is what I would call it. And then we've got naturally the lumbar spine as part of, yeah, the sacral spine and coccygeal area in here. And we've also got the right and left hip joint, okay, or the iliofemoral joint, yeah, along a sort of area in here. But I guess it probably makes more sense to, to look at the pelvis as a starting point. You can have a read of all the texts as we go through, but I think it's nice maybe just to, to listen yeah, and watch me point to certain structures. What I'm going to do is use a pen and I'm just going to just contact areas. So if you're looking at, if I'm going to come over this side, let's start with something called the innominate bones. So the innominate, what that means is it's a conjoined bone of the ilium, okay, the ilium and the ischium and the pubis. Okay, so the innominate is one conjoined bone of three. So if you are past the age of 30 plus, more than likely, there will be one bone called the innominate. Whereas if you are less than 18 years old, then more than likely you've got three separate entities here. Okay, inside the socket, this is called the acetabula, that is a part of the ilium, a part of the ischium, and part of the pubis. So if you actually look at a human pelvis and focus on the acetabulum, you have a socket, then you will see where they conjoin, like the sutures of the, the cranial bones. So let's look at some bony landmarks to start with. So maybe we'll look at the, the ilium. Now we can see, um, we're starting this out, okay? So you've got something called the anterior superior iliac spine, known as the ASIS here, and it's also on this edge just there. And in terms of a muscle, then a muscle attachment for the ASIS will be the sartorius. The area just inferior to that will be the anterior inferior iliac spine, okay, the anterior inferior iliac spine, and that will be where the attachment of the rectus femoris will be, which is one of the quadriceps muscles. Posteriorly, we've got something called the posterior superior iliac spine, known as the PSIS, and then inferior, we've actually got the posterior inferior iliac spine. So the PIIS is located below that on here. This will be the iliac crest, which naturally comes around. Okay, so this is the iliac crest along here. And it's one of those areas like this side here. So when you learn the assessment of the pelvis, then you're looking for levels. And naturally, if one level is higher, yeah, compared to one level is lower, then maybe that pelvis has gone up on that side or the pelvis has gone down on this side. Okay, so if you're looking at, this is like the, uh, let's, let's move on. So we've got the ramus of pubis along here. Okay, so this is the superior ramus all around here. And then we've got the inferior ramus along here. So this is the pubic sort of, well, this is the pubic bone along here. And then it comes down to the ischial tuberosity. Yeah, around that sort of area. So visual tuberosity, which is this corner, if you're not sure, then this is where the hamstrings will attach onto this area. This space in here is called the obturator foramen, known as the foramen. Okay, so this is the obturator foramen here. Uh, in terms of the joints, this is the synthesis pubis joint here. This is a piece of fibrocartilage in between. We've got the sacroiliac joint here on the right side, 
and sacral area joint here on the left side. We'll discuss that. And naturally, we've got the L5 vertebra, L4, and L3. So L5, yeah, where the L5-S1 disc is located, has an articulation to the sacrum here. And then either side, we've got the left hip joint, or the iliofemoral joint, and the right hip. So this is a, a picture of the hip here. Uh, this is the head of the femur. You can see this little attachment from there to there. So that, if I just do that, where are we, if I just draw that, there will be a ligament along here. It's not written down, but that ligament is known as the ligamentum teres. Teres meaning round, and then it contains uh, an artery, so it supplies a small part of the head of the femur here, yeah, with blood like that. Um, and then this would be the neck of the femur along here. This is the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter is just on that corner there. Okay, so that's part of that. Now, on the ilium, so where the sacrum meets the ilium, so this is almost like the shape of an ear. So they call it like the auricular surface. Not quite the same drawn, but you'll understand what I mean. So that's called the auricular surface. And the sacrum naturally fits in here. Okay, fits in here. And part of that, we call this... Number one, the short arm here, and number two is the long arm. So for instance, when the sacrum goes into a motion, which you will learn later called nutation, it will go down number one and along number two. Okay, so it goes down and along. So it almost goes inferiorly, posteriorly along here. And when the sacrum goes into its opposite motion, or what we call counter nutation, it will go along, okay, and up. So it's gonna go like anteriorly, superiorly along here. But we'll explain that more in, in further lessons. Okay, let's move on. Let's have a look at this page. So again, you've got the same page, so maybe go through that. So some of the ligaments of the hip, we've got the iliofemoral ligament here, which is one of the strongest ligaments you've got. So that's the iliofemoral. And we've also got the ischiofemoral ligament around here. And anteriorly, you will have the, the pubofemoral, which is not written on that. You can see again visual tuberosity, yeah, from there. And the pubic synthesis joint here. So this is the piece of fibrocartilage in between. Uh, and you can have a read about that. On to the sacrum. So on the sacrum, so you've got this corner here. It's called the ILA, which means the inferior lateral angle. And when you learn about sacral torsions, you will be palpating this part um, when you're looking at, say, right on right or left on left sacral torsions. This is the sacral hiatus here. This is also known as the apex, but the corner is the ILA here. This would be known as the sacral base. You can't really see it on there, but this is known as the sacral base. And then the innominate bone will be, that'll be the left innominate, and then that'll be the right innominate here. Okay, so the space between, I'll do it again, so the space between the innominates there would be known as the sacral sulcus. Okay, so the sacral sulcus will be in there, and that'll be when you palpate it to see if the sacrum has rotated. So this is the facet joints, and naturally this will articulate. So this will be like the superior facet, and then that will connect to the inferior facet of L5, yeah, along this sort of area. And then we'll have the sacral spines coming down to naturally the fused coccyx at the end. And again, you can see on the sacrum, you can see this position. So the sacrum naturally sits around 30 to 50 degrees, what we call nutation. And again, on the ilia, we had a one and a two. Okay, so the sacrum will fit perfectly in conjunction with the ilia. And then it will glide along one and two, depending on what motion is happening around there. The coccyx, you can read about that. In your own time. So let's move on. Again, let's look at my pen. On this one, it talks about the sacroiliac joint, yeah, and I'll read about it on here. Uh, we know it's a synovial joint, okay, so it is classified as a freely movable joint. The problem is because you've got so many ligaments around it, then it almost acts as a type of fibrous joint, but that's incorrect because we know it's a synovial joint. Uh, when you read one of the lessons further on, um, I talk about Fortin, where they had some injection yeah, to the area, I think it was in 1994, and then it gave pain um, around 
this inferior part of the SI joint, which when 10 centimeters inferior to about two to three centimeters uh, lateral. But you can read about that in the further lessons. Some of the ligaments, you can see it like a, a dome here, okay? Like a three dimensional bone in this sort of area. So you've got the hips, either side, the acetabula. So this ligament here, ligaments are quite easy because it goes from the uh, sacrum to the sacral uh, ischial spine here, so we call it the sacrospinous ligament. It's written somewhere here, there you go. So the sacrospinous ligament, and then this ligament below it, uh, well, actually crosses it, I should say, okay, along here. It's called the key ligament by Vleeman, a chap called Andre Vleeman, and this is the sacro tuber tuberosity, so it's called the sacro tuberous ligament in here. Uh, then you've got the dorsal sacroiliac and then the deep one is called the interosseous and you can see the synovial joint in here okay so the SI joint along there okay um, yeah we see the lumbar spine yeah on there a couple of ligaments on the pubis okay so you've got the superior ligament across here and then you've got the inferior or the arcuate ligament below next page some more ligaments along here. Now the iliolumbar ligament, you can't really see it that well, you will see it in the next lesson. So the iliolumbar has actually got five bands, okay, so this is L4, there's a band here, okay, and then L5, you can't really see it but coming off there, but it's actually got five bands that connects. And interestingly, this uh, quadratus lumborum will blend along the iliac crest and blends into that ligament and then it goes off and attaches to the lumbar spine and the 12th rib further up. The anterior sacroiliac ligament in here, uh, you can see the sacrotuberous one again, okay. Uh, now, the posterior part, we've got the sacrotuberous ligament here, which is the key ligament, and you might notice that it blends. See this one there, called the long dorsal ligament? And uh, you can also call it the posterior sacroiliac ligament as well. So the PSIS is there, and it comes down, Okay, so inferior to the PSIS will be the long dorsal ligament. And sometimes when patients point to the SI joint, they don't point to the joint itself, they point to that ligament. Why? Because it tends to be particularly tender. So if it's tender inferior to the PSIS, it might well be, imagine this, okay, if I do this, if I take that denominate anteriorly, okay, so if I do that as anterior, then that ligament is going to be on stretch. So you might find it's painful because you've got an anterior rotation of your nominate. And if it goes forward, then the sacrotuberous ligament here, this one, is going to slacken. Okay, so just bear that in mind for future, for future lessons. Okay, so we've got the long dorsal ligament, and then we've got the sacrotuberous. They work synergistically together. However, if we have a rotation of your nominate, doesn't matter which way, or a rotation of the sacrum, okay, or nutation, counter nutation of the sacrum, then these ligaments are going to slacken or tension depending what position they are in. Now that ligament, the sacrotuberous, as I mentioned, it is here, actually has four muscles that attach to it. And these are part of the force closure muscles that you will learn about. So these four directly influence the tension of that ligament. And it's very important you understand that. Moving on. Okay, so the last bit doesn't really um, have much to this section. Okay, so the function of the SI joint, you learn this more when we discuss uh, the gait cycle yeah, and motion of the pelvis. You can see that there's an arrow coming down that will give you stability from below to the SI joint, but also we've got tension coming up from the legs that would increase sacroiliac joint in here. Okay, so you can talk about um, the function of the SIJs here to transfer the weight from the lower limb to the upper limb. You can have a read about this yeah, as we go through. Okay, so that's uh, lesson one complete from this perspective. What you need to do now is watch the future videos on the ligaments, the bony landmarks, and some of the muscles. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any a message for me then just leave in the comments box and thanks again for booking